the devil, he lets me know I'm so undeserving. I'm unworthy of God's love. I know it's true. Here I am with the chosen.
be as non-operational. There's something, there's something missing. Isn't there? There's something lacking. So if we would realize that, and uh, if we are we can't we can't get along with one another. If we are a body of Christ and members of the church, we cannot function without one another. Jesus Christ. We sometimes look at different things, but you never know how many would could really know who's a child of God and who's not. It's God that knows that. You and I may see certain things on the outside that may look in a certain direction at a certain point in time, but God knows where His true seeds is. true seed that's been walking straight all along or you could have been caught in there and God can bring you back so therefore there's nothing unless God gives you the spirit of discernment we cannot tell who's who we can see an outward expression but even though things go in a certain direction who knows that God can turn because he's going to have his final product anyway I'll praise the Lord this week I was uh, traveling down Nova Scotia and on two different nights a uh, thought came and I thought one, it would be relevant to really for the time that we are living in and one of them is found in Revelation the 10th chapter which I'll speak about this morning. Somebody could uh, maybe get a glass of water. As you get older, you get your throat gets a little drier, so a little lubrication don't help. Uh, it does help, sorry, don't help. There you go, see? Um, <coughs> just in answer to s some of you that uh, had some questions that was brought up because uh, what was said in the convention. I was brought to my attention about a sermon that Brother Branham preached in 1965. Just before he died, in I believe it was in the month of uh, uh, November, around the 11th month, and he preached a message, work, is faith expressed. He hit it right on the nail. There are other good things in that sermon too that will answer other questions. 
I put it on the website. It's in the uh, 2007 sermons. And if you look in the Branham directory in the, uh, on the website, it's also there for your convenience to, to listen if you want to. But anyway, it's there for you to listen. If you have a question, if things been bothering you about the certain thing that was expressed, I suggest that you listen to that sermon. And I think it'll confirm, I know, it confirmed what I believed. So praise the Lord. If I was to title it this morning, I would say, America, how long? How long is America going to last in the way that she is running her course now? We know as we look a picture towards the end time, as we're coming near the end, we see certain biblical profile that we know when the week of Daniel arrives that the Antichrist, Europe, the beast is to be in place. They would be the major powers, them and the king of the east. As we are looking today, we see America still a strong power in the world. She still has a lot. America, although they, her influence is being is weaning away, and God is bringing warning. Usually, God brings warning before judgment. It's not one warning and then the judgment. Usually, God will warn many times, leading up to a place where warning does not produce anything then somewhere God draws a line and brings judgment. And you and I are looking, as a bride, we're looking to go out of here. We're looking at world events on one side and the prophetic picture. We are also looking at the bride and where, how far she's getting along and where she's going to. Yes, we're in the time of the fivefold ministry. If you don't see it now, if you don't understand that now, maybe you never will. But I must bring to your understanding one thing. As the church is going towards perfection, so is the fivefold ministry going towards perfection. And the fivefold ministry those that God has set in certain in us in an assembly that assembly is solemn before God in its functioning towards him one assembly is not overseer of other assemblies because what is needful in this assembly God will see to it that whatever is required will get done he knows his plan what I'm trying to say is, does everyone that listened to the messages over the years have everything down pat and perfect? No. Well, the ministry is no different. They're just men that God called out of the congregation. Yes, more is required. Now, I'm not trying to lift... The ministry, but if you're looking at the ministry, well, everything's got to be so perfect that it's not, the ministry has not come to her perfection yet. How many understand that? But then don't go saying there's a whole lot of mistakes. There isn't a whole lot of mistakes. God is leading us certain directions. I know those that has gone away and gone on side, they think we're denominated and they, every kind of an idea that they think of. All I have to say Watch what you're doing. There's God's hands upon it. And if it gets worse and worse, it should be assigned to you. But now getting back here, I know I'm getting away from 
let's say, speaking about what, I, what the Lord had brought to my attention. In that we have all listened to Brother Jackson, some of you that's been on the road some 30 years or so, or even if you've been on 10 years or so, just because you heard him over that many years, there might have been certain aspect of his messages that you were attuned to it, that thrilled you. You were, let's say, drawn like a duck to water to it. But there was other areas, you heard it, but it was not, seemed to you, might not have been as important as some other areas. So therefore, you become certain knowledgeable, yes, to a certainty on one area. Or it might have been two, three areas, whatever the case may be. You have a general overall picture. But if someone asks you to testify in an area which you might have not paid that much attention to, you may say in your own words certain things, and it depends how you understood it. Because if we all understood the same way, everything in exact detail, it would be perfect. You take a classroom, all right, of people. You've been all been to school. There's one teacher that's up in the front. He explains the subject. Then after class, I've been there. What did, what did you, did you hear this part? No, but did, did you hear this part? There were certain parts that was more interest to you than your fellow student. So therefore, if you try to express yourself in the thing that you didn't really hear right, you could make some mistakes. But you're still a student. And the thing is the attitude to learn. And if the student, the other student that knows that area tells her, well, it really was this, then you have gained knowledge and you're working together. It is no difference with the fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry is in a learning curve right now. Just as much as the body of Christ. Now it's not the body of Christ that's going to tell the ministry how to preach and that to go forth in that manner. Because why would have God call the fivefold ministry to begin with? Let everybody have its own way and surely it'll all learn out and majority will win. It don't work that way. It's just God called the ministry to do certain things. Well, praise the Lord. So if you hear certain things to your ears that may be off-colored, don't take that person and throw him out. He's out. Not, he's, he's not worth anything anymore. No. Because you could be in the same boat as well. How much do you know the word? So let's all grow together like our brother was testifying. Hey, we all need improvement. Whether it is in the Word or how we walk. Well, praise the Lord. I, okay. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 10. Time-wise, that is just ahead of us. Chapter 10 has not unfolded yet. The thunders have not sounded yet. But I'm looking at a small little time frame. Because when the thunders do sound, the prophesying to tongues and nations and so forth is not going to be years and years and years down the road. It's going to be connected to this 10th chapter. I don't know if that's... Is that better than this one here? I've put some gray in it. The other one I put some white. 
Is that better than the other one? The other one's better. Or it's no difference? No difference? Okay, that's fine. I just thought I'd try it. If you don't try anything, you won't find it. Uh, find out. We have come. We're nearing about two wars that's going to take place just up the road. These two wars are related to how close that chapter 10 arrives. And I know in the minds of some, and me included, but how long can that, when is it going to transpire? Seeing that America is the major power, because it has a place to play, rolling around when that week begins. The Bible tells us Europe should be the major player. And the kings of the east. But the actual conditions in the world today, it's America that's the major player. And so as I was, oh, it might have been around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Have you ever tossed over and you have a thought come to your mind in the morning and you can't let it go? Well, here's where they was impressed. I had heard a sermon on the way going down to Halifax. So usually I'll put some on when I'm traveling, when I'm going long distance. And it was speaking, Brother Jackson was speaking about the angel. John was told to take that little book out of the angel's hand. And as he does, and we'll read it here in verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hands of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel. Now this angel, he characterizes Christ. It is not Jesus Christ. God allows an angel to speak in the first term at times of who he is himself. And the angel will also speak in the first term of Jesus Christ also. The whole book of Revelation is a book of visions. Do you know what a vision is? You're seeing something as real, but it is not the real thing itself. You're seeing something futuristic standing back in the day that you're looking at. So now John is told to take the little book out of the angel's hand. By that time, the thunders has already sounded. You and I, the bride, are anxious, ready to go. But we have been instructed enough to know there's got to be certain world conditions at the time of the thunders have to exist. I'll read a little bit more. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto, he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. And it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. But as soon as I eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before people, nations, tongues, and kings. In order for that to transpire,
You need conditions that are will be set in the world for the worldly people and the leadership of countries willing to take if you want to an instruction or at least wanting to hear some instruction from a servant or a man of God. Right now they want anything that has to do with God, they want to throw out, get it out of politics. We don't have nothing to do with it. They say they believe in God, but couldn't care less about God's agenda and His Word. What they care about is, God help me keep my plan today. Bless my plan. I want to make Israel compromise. They're ignorant of the Word of God. They're using it as a crutch. But now, I want to lay a little bit of background before I really get into it. As John was told to take the little book and eat it, and to prophesy to nations and tongues and so forth, John is a type of the bride. Remember, when John is told this to take the book out of the angel's hand, he's not standing physically in 2008 or 9 or 10, whatever the year might be. Now, if I say a certain year, people say, oh, he said a year. Get real. Well, okay. So now, as John is, sees this, He's physically standing in 96 AD that he's seen this. So every John's not going to come up and be resurrected and, and Paul and all the other saints to help fulfill this last chapter, or this, sorry, this chapter of Revelation chapter 10. So it is projected of what that work is to be to a people that will be living at the end time when that, ten, when that seventh seal is broke. But we have a type of that God laid a type that we can look into to what those prophecies are going to be meaning to. Now since John, yes, he was a Jew, but he was in the age of grace, in the kingdom of heaven, which pertains to the Gentiles. But now we will pick up Ezekiel, which he himself is a Jew, but then he is to prophesy to the Jewish nation. As Ezekiel is typed to prophesy to the Jewish nation, so will the bride in an element will be also prophesied to kings, tongues, and nations, so forth, here at the end time. Let's look at Ezekiel for just a moment. In the second chapter. Now Ezekiel, he too, in 595 B.C., he's given visions of certain things that will be futuristic. And he's also instructed by the Spirit of God to prophesy to the nation of Israel. And as we read, in, as we, if you want to look at in chapter 1, verse 26, And above the firmament that was over the heads was, light, was the likeness. Now what does it, the word likeness mean? It's as something. As or likeness doesn't mean the actual thing itself. That's why it's a vision. He's seen this. It's like, it's going, it's like that. That's what he saw. But it was not for his day. He saw it yes, in a vision form where he was standing. But he was looking at something that was in a certain likeness. When it says likeness, it's not the actual thing itself. It's the best way I can put it. And there appeared a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. He sees a man sitting on the throne. Who's that man? Is it actual Jesus? 
No. Who's given him the vision? An angel. That man that's sitting on there, who's portraying that? An angel. Because remember, in a vision, it's not a dream. You see that as actuality to you, but it is just a vision. And the likeness was the, the appearance of a man upon it. And I saw the colors of amber and the appearance of fire round about it. And the appearance of the loins were even upon up. So of his loins were upward. And the appearance of his loins even downward. And I saw as it were the appearance of fire that had the brightness around, round about. And as the appearance of a bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. That, verse 28 first part portrays to you the presence of the great God uh, Jehovah not that he's a Je we're Jehovah witness but just to express it is a great eternal being he has no form or shape as far as his being is concerned and in order to portray that he is there he has to manifest something to show his presence and so he's appeared there he's appeared as a cloud by day and a rainbow I was in the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God so he, he likens it to the glory of God yes he has to see something but in the being of Ezekiel he feels that presence of God like you and I feel it from time to time when he comes upon us now he more or less must have felt it a whole lot more than you and I would, would feel from time to time because he's caught up in this vision. And this was the appearance like of the glory of God. When I saw it, I fell to my face and I heard the voice, a voice of one that spake. Now let's go to chapter 2. And as this voice speaks to Ezekiel, starting in verse 7 of the second chapter, And the voice is really speaking to Ezekiel saying, And thou shalt speak my words unto them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious people. Now God is getting ready. He's telling Ezekiel, You speak my word. There's another part in the scripture where he actually hears the word. That he needs to speak. And Jesus said that those words that you'll need to speak in that day, he would, that it would be provided to you. So it will not be something you're going to rehearse. You're not talking about a written scripture. Ezekiel was told what he needed to prophesy to that Jewish nation. He says, when you do, it's going to be whether they will hear you or reject you what you're saying the condition in Ezekiel's hour that we're seeing here parallels the hour when the bride is going to prophesy to nation tongues and so forth it's the same condition that existed yes Ezekiel was to the Jewish nation but to the bride of Jesus Christ those whom that will be ordained to speak to kings tongues and nations and so forth they will all they will speak to the Gentiles all right, let's go a little bit more. But thou, son of man, hear what I have to say, say I say unto thee. Be thou not rebellious like the rebellion, rebellious house. Open thy mouth, eat that I give thee. As Ezekiel is given something to eat, and it's not eat that it's a fish cake or manna in that manner, but it is the word of God that he has to eat, partake. Eating means partaking. So the bride of Jesus Christ, at the end, when she prophesies, she's going to take that little book too, and she's going to eat something. In other words, the word of God is going to come to those that are ordained to prophesy to those nations. All right. And I look, and behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein and he spread it before me and it was written within without and there was written now here 
Here's, it doesn't tell you exactly all that Ezekiel was to preach. But here's the mood or the jest of the condition of what he would had to say to the nation of Israel. And therein was lamentations, mournings, and woes. And that don't sound too cheerful, does it? All right. Verse 17 of chapter 3, and then we'll go back to Revelation chapter 10 after that. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the words at my mouth. Now when it says at his mouth, God is speaking directly to him. And give them warnings from me. He's not saying send blessings from me. Warnings. All right. Now that I've laid the groundwork, let's look at Revelation chapter 10. We're going to look at some conditions. As Ezekiel was to prophesy to the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel had the word of God. To some extent, they were <coughs> there was different type of beliefs in, the, in that day, just like there is in the world that exists today. But now, the bride of Jesus Christ, when we arrive at this hour, right here. She's going to prophesy. I know, and I keep repeating it, but sometimes it's the only way to anchor it down. Thou must prophesy to kings, tongues, and nations, and so forth. God is not going to send someone to China to prophesy doom and gloom. First of all, none of the Chinese would ever accept any prophecy going their way. Neither Japan or those eastern countries. Prophecy is mainly made for those of the Christian world. And the Christian world has to be there to hear it. And in order for them to hear from a little group that's called the bride which they discount in this hour of time today, then God has to put his hand on the world and turn it upside down by bringing first, leading up to it, he's going to bring that miraculous war. That's going to upset the apple cart and the economies, the economics of this world. If you think gas is going to be high at forty this summer, I'm not saying that it is, I'm not a prophet. But when that miraculous war hits, now they're speculating on, well, we might have a shortage to bring in the price. But when that miraculous war hits, there will be a shortage for a brief period of time. Nations will scramble. Countries' economics will be turned into disarray. While that's happening, now the players that hate Israel, Russia, Libya, Ethiopia, Iran and Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Turkey, all these countries will have a go, try to have a go at Israel again. But when they do, God now intervenes on behalf of Israel. But it's at that moment in time, Russia goes down and never to rise again. God will send fire on Gog and Magog and all the other nations that participated. 
Now world condition is in the Christian realm. I'm not speaking about in the bride, but in Christianity and in Judaism, if you want to. What's going on? We thought the four horse riders were in the future. We thought Ezekiel 38, 39, that's Armageddon. All their doctrines had gone haywire. The politicians are looking for directions now. Their little play plans has, has been disrupted to no end. They're looking for a peace to come in. So now God has set the conditions for kings, nations, and tongues to hear something that could be prophesied to them. And the bride by that hour has already been perfected and God will anoint certain men to go prophesy to these nations. But what about America? How long is it going to last? Will America hear you now if, you, if any servant of God went to prophesy to them now? No. You couldn't even get to the courtyard other buildings but I want to put this on the other hand and here's what came why prophesy doom and gloom after America has been judged she don't need it So what I'm saying, what I, I saw, that America will last up to where that week almost begins, where the bride will also, and where's the majority of Christianity today? It's in America. But somewhere briefly around that period of time, after the bride has prophesied, yes, America is one of them. She needs to be rebuked. She will not accept the prophecies that will come forth. And as I was listening to Brother Jackson, he was saying, it would be nothing for someone to go up to Washington and tell some of those politicians, if you don't heed to God's word, in a few short days, your life is going to be required. God's going to do something. Now that don't fit the picture if America has already been judged. So time-wise, this has been put in this here now, right where that week begins. Then in the minds of some say, oh, well, if, that's, if America is going to be judged and the George Washington vision is going to, it has to happen long before that because it takes a long time for that to unfold. No, it don't. With the modern military equipment that America has now, if this George Washington vision lasts a couple of months, at the most, it would be it. Then you still have two years for America to be made ready for the woman Israel to come. Now, how many can see what I'm saying this morning? Reading between the lines, if we are to prophesy to nations and tongues and people, is because they need it. But if they've been already been judged by God, then why do it a second time? How many see? So how long will America last? Now, does that mean we're going to go on our easy chair? Brother Fred said, well, it's going to go uh, almost through the week, and, and so we can take it easy. Maybe we might not be hit so hard economically, economically and maybe we don't need to get prepared. Look, this can happen in short order. By looking at the picture this morning, there's more than a year left. There may be three, five, three or five. Now, because I said three or five, that don't mean that it is. But I know it's not going to be tomorrow or next month. 
But what are you going to do to get ready when the time comes that angel, that Jesus comes off the mercy seat and the seven thunder sounds? The time to get ready is now. God's not going to force you to get ready. Work out your own salvation. You have the choice. But don't come to me when that Jesus comes off the mercy seat and say, Well, Brother Fred, you should have been more stronger about it. Well, how strong do you have to be? Do I have to go with a baseball bat to your homes and, and check you out? That's God's business. The Holy Ghost is the one that corrects. I'm not going to... I've got enough traveling on the road in the natural that I do without having to travel to your places to go find out what you're doing. I'm not that nosy. But if you invite me, I won't go nosing around your house and, oh, let's see if you got everything. Oh, let's see what they have in their books shelf. And, hey, look, you don't answer to the preacher, you answer to God. I'm just a person just like you are. There's no merit in, in being a preacher in, in that sense. We're all saved by the grace of God. We all got to work together, brother. We're all of one body, grown together. And allow your brother and sisters the room to grow. And the correction sh should be left first to the room to God to correct things. Yes, if something brings a disturbance in the assembly. Yes, that has to be dealt with. But I don't find another joy. Let's see who I can correct this morning. I'd rather play my guitar than do that. It's my se second, third love. You've got to get it right. Right? You see, you almost got caught there. So can you see how this is a little piece of the puzzle? Because when we're going to prof when the bride prophesies to the leaderships of the countries of the Christian world, and that's include Europe, it's not going to be just in America. It's going to be prophesied too. I can think of Brother Governor and the, and the governments in Africa, wherever God will send him to. Make your way to the government and prophesy to them. Norway. Europe. Wherever there's... God will have someone to prophesy to whoever needs it. But the reason they're being prophesied to of woe, lamentations, and corrections is the Christian world that has not been walking according to God's word. These denominational churches that say they're, yes, they're the bride of Christ, and they're getting behind Rome's coattail to be joined with them, you don't know your Bible. The reason they don't know their Bible, all they care about, we got to get more saved this year than last year. Got to have more souls in. We gotta have do more programs. God knows who the predestinate seeds are, and He's gonna bring them in. He don't need you to put a program on. He's in the saving business. But He's asked you, the different churches, get ready. And you're not gonna get ready by just John three sixteen. But we need John three sixteen if you haven't been saved. But in order to be ready, there's a book that the reason is in there, that book of Revelation, which your denomination don't want to touch because they get their fingers burnt and they don't want to follow the Spirit of God that has opened this book. And that's why they can't see anything in the hour they're living in and they're going back to Mama. It says, and that woman in Revelation chapter 17, the mother of harlots, who do you think the daughters are? Confucius? Muhammad? Religion? No. 
It's the offshooting Christianity. They are the daughters. And, and the Bible has a proverb in the Old Testament. As the mother is, so is the daughters. They ought to look at it once in a while. Are they really following the word of God? And these are some when the bride has to prophesy to the nations, people in tongues. No doubt there'll be some in the leadership of those churches. They're not going to like what they're going to hear. But when that's over, the bride is going up. We're going to meet the actual, literal Jesus Christ in the air. There it won't be an angel we meet in the air. That is he himself, Jesus Christ. Now if the angel... Now maybe I'll save that for tonight. Or for the other thought that the Lord has brought, I felt to share with you this morning. The other thought was, I'll just mention it. Not any angel is allowed to characterize Christ. And when an archangel is involved, Brother Branham said it's something of a dynamic nature. God is on the move using that angel for a turn of events or something special. So if no ordinary angel is allowed to characterize Christ, I see some pretype where an angel in the Old Testament was allowed to to be shown as Christ in the vision, as a man. And anyway, I don't want to say too much, so you have it all in just five seconds and then we'll have nothing to preach tonight. Do I know everything? Do No. But if nobody looks towards, as we're moving on in time, and we just say, stay with the safe things. Well, that's what Brother Branham preached, and that's what Brother Jackson preached. There are things that as we move on, God's going to open up the picture a little bit. It's got to be the same picture. As God elaborate from Brother Branham when he brought Brother Jackson, he elaborated. And even from the first day that he preached, he elaborated on the picture that he seen as he get, came on in the latter years of his years. And if God is always moving on, then there's got to be a few little nuggets. Or as we look at the picture, it's something that comes more meaningful. And the reason it comes more meaningful is because as we progress in time, time has a way of an effect of bringing certain nuggets to bear. Because God said that he would not leave, he would not leave anything hidden from his friends which is the bride he's not going to say well I, I'm sorry I forgot to tell you about that part no it's not no big revelation we're not you know sometimes we come here oh I, I, I want to hear another big revelation oh I, I want to I want to see the spirit move everybody run all over the place hearing a big revelation and running all over the place it's not going to get you ready. Revelation gives you insight of the time you're living at to get ready. And we do need the gifts. Now, I don't mean to scold, but how many is, is saying, Lord, if there's some way, if some things in the way of a gift, please stir it up. Or do you want me to grab all the gifts and I display them? No, I got enough with what I'm doing now. 
It's, a bo- it's in the body. And I'm for it. And we'll grow together. Don't be nervous. Well, I, I was just so scared. They've been correcting everybody. And they'll stomp on me. Look. I'm not that harsh. How do we get to learn? Just because you heard it one time and then you got everything perfect? No. Till the time we come to our completion, we're, we're going to learn some things as we go. The ministry as well as the body. Because the gifts, the nine spiritual gifts, are not just for the ministry. And I'm thankful that it ain't. Because then we would get big heads and you say, well, there we go. There, I told you. But praise the Lord. Well, you look at me so bl- with blank face. Now I've thrown some responsibility back in your, your seat, right? So we all have to pick up our boots. If we look to what the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants, then let's the heart's throb desire we should have. Praise God. And he'll make us grow. And we'll grow together. Amen. As a, an assembly here, and as time goes on, God will have all the assemblies looking in the same direction. But right now, we're in that period, still in a period of growth. Because if the bride has come to perfection, I'd have to tell you, you'd missed it. Because if, you, if the bride's perfect, he's taking her home. So praise God. Aren't you happy? Are you going to be more serious about your walk? in the days to come? Look beyond your cross and look towards what God's going to use you in that millennium. If worldly things have taken up your eyes and been more important, you only have but a few short ears to play around with those things. It'll be worth it all if we walk with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as I mentioned earlier, yes, this is where those that are into bride that are to be. There may be others that may have gone astray, but you don't discount them. God can turn around in a very short order. Now, I'm not proud of it, but I was caught in an error too a while back. Well, you say you you shouldn't do that. You're making me lose confidence in what you're saying. You don't have confidence in the preacher to begin with. Have confidence in the Lord. You trust Him. And give Him some time to work things out. Sometimes we just focus on that little narrow time frame. Oh, this is all wrong. Oh, I don't know what's going to do and everything. And we get all in the panic and the rush and my, so nervous. And the devil says, hey, I got one on the string now. Yes, rest and walk steady with the Lord. But don't go allowing the world to overcome you. That lukewarm spirit. That's the hardest thing to fight in this hour. Nobody likes a dull job. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, I've said enough for this morning too. So I don't want to burn your dinner and then I'll have another thing on the plate that says, well, their brother Fred's too long. He doesn't do this, right? That and the other thing. Hey, I'm just a human being. Let's just stand this morning, have musicians to come at the same time. Lord, as as we spoke these few words, Lord, I just pray that you take the words, paint the picture to the people, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us in this day and this hour. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Can you see that?